media in the area of voter mobilization, particularly the political parties. To mobilize the citizens to go and vote should be a responsibility far beyond the role conferred on the commission by the Electoral Act. It is for this reason that the commission in our 2012-2016 strategic plan, the previous one, sought to put in place a framework for the development, design, and dissemination of voter and civic education materials through the harmonization of concepts and approaches. A realization of the fact that INEC cannot single-handedly undertake or achieve effective mobilization and voter education with the desired scope and reach, the commission inaugurated a 15-member advisory interagency committee on voter education and publicity, NICVEP, in 2014. The membership of NICVEP consists of INEC along with relevant MDAs and professional bodies to leverage on their considerable experience, expertise, resources, and reach to enhance the level of citizens' awareness of electoral matters. It was our expectation that the activities of NICVEP would discourage voter apathy, encourage and promote positive attitudes among citizens, encourage compliance with regulations, discourage violence and all forms of malpractices, and increase more effective participation in the electoral process. Unfortunately, this effort at actualizing a coordinated and effective civic and voter education approach did not yield the, the desired result due largely to inadequate resources. The Commission is still convinced about the value of NICVEP as a veritable instrument for mainstreaming voters, mobilizing and enlightening the citizenry on electoral processes, and engendering free, fair, credible, and acceptable elections. It is for this reason that INEC is again making efforts to engage a wide range of stakeholders in the formulation and implementation of effective civic and voter education mechanisms and strategies through the design and development of messages targeting the voter population as well as all socially excluded and marginalized groups in the electoral process. We will require the individual and collective commitment and support of members of BON in accomplishing this objective. And Mr. Chairman, let me put you on notice that INEC is coming to Bonn. We want to resuscitate and revive the NIC VEP, and we believe that Bonn has a very critical role to play. In the area of election security, we have the National Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security, ICSES. It's time for us to revive the idea of us, the same consultative committee on voter education and publicity. So Mr. Chairman will come back knocking on your door once again. The second area, and I mentioned, I said there'll be three. The second area where we need bond support is for fair, professional, and ethical coverage of electoral processes. Elections have become an important source of revenue for the media, with wealthy candidates and political parties spending large amounts of money on political advertising. And sometimes this results in skewed coverage in favor of those who can afford the high cost of advertising. And often also in violation of the provisions of the Electoral Act because there is a cap placed on campaign spending by individuals and political parties. In some cases, sections of the media do not always strictly adhere to professional and eth ethical standards for a variety of reasons. This is not only a violation of several sections of the Electoral Act 99, 100, 101, and 102, but that kind of unprofessional attitude actually imperils our democracy. If you want to see the role of some of the media in subverting the process and the ugly consequences, we only need to remind ourselves of Rwanda 1994 and Kenya 2007. It is a known fact that elections often tend to exacerbate artificial divisions within the complex environment of Nigeria. And some actors 
often exploit these divisions to threaten the conduct of peaceful elections. It is a duty and responsibility of Bonn to mitigate this unwholesome practice as post-election violence are often triggered by hate campaigns perpetuated by opposing candidates and political parties. And I'm happy that our respected elder statesman is going to speak on hate speech. The Nigerian Media Code of Election Coverage, adopted by the key media stakeholder organizations in October 2014, still offers self-regulatory guidelines for fair, accurate, and balanced coverage. Bonn should not relent in pushing for the regulation of political advertising and in promoting the global obligation of broadcasters to give equal access to all contestants and in protecting the unity and national interest of the country against the use of unsavory documentaries and hate speech, especially during live election uh, campaign broadcasts. Finally, the third point, organization of debate for candidates seeking political office. Since the restoration of democracy in Nigeria in 1999, the Nigerian Election Debate Group, which is a coalition of broadcast organizations, civil society, and professional groups, has been in the vanguard of organizing and hosting live televised debates in presidential, vice presidential, and some governorship elections in the country. Some media organizations have been involved in the organization of live debates and broadcasts among candidates seeking political office, especially during off-season governorship elections. We have seen many media organizations respond and it's most commendable. The conduct of such election debates among, can among candidates has become a key mechanism for deepening political participation, helping to focus candidates on policy issues, clarifying, clarifying choices and options open to the electorate, creating level playing field in political contest and reducing political tension. Undoubtedly, these debates have afforded the Nigerian electorate the opportunity to watch and listen to presidential and governorship candidates on their intentions and aspirations through an equal opportunity platform. It has also allowed them to compare the candidates running for office and to understand their positions on key public policy issues. A key player in the Nigeria election debate group is the Broadcasting Organization of Nigeria. And I was so happy when in November 2016, we went to observe the US elections. And one of the things we insisted we must do, one of the groups we insisted we must interact with was the Presidential Election Debates Commission in the US. Well, we had a meeting with them in Washington, and one of the first things they told us is that Bonn had already been in touch with them, and that they even visited Nigeria and had some interactive session with Bonn. We hope you will continue to support, to strengthen uh, these processes, because debates are necessary for deepening democracy and promoting civil discourse and providing platform for candidates to articulate their positions on public policy issues. Debates serve an important role of demonstrating to aspiring candidates that democracy is about standing before the public and responding to their questions by representing the people. There must be an opportunity for you to stand before the public, tell them what you want to do, and defend the positions and your, the, your position, and allow them to ask questions um, to know exactly what way you are thinking. Invariably, debates assist voters in making informed decisions on election day, and they also provide a yardstick for holding the elected candidates accountable to their party manifestos and campaign promises. As we move closer to the 2019 general elections, my appeal to distinguished members of Bonn is that we should remain vigilant and constantly look out for those who seek to divide and incite Nigerians through fake narratives.
when we hear such allegations against the commission, I urge you to endeavor to ask us for clarification through our open official channels or by making use of other available channels. Our doors are open and will always oblige you with the information that you need. We are confident that when professional organizations like yours put truthful stories out there in the public domain, it will be easy to tackle rumor mongers and peddlers of fake news. Mr. Chairman, let me conclude by saying that the Commission has conducted five general elections since 1999. And the 2015 election has so far been adjudged to be the best of them all. Since then, we have conducted elections into 179 constituencies. 179 constituencies is more than the constituencies in a general election in many African countries. In fact, the number of registered voters in Anambra State alone in the last governorship election is more than the total number of registered voters in the Republic of Liberia. And there are countries I know in our sub-region where the entire voter population is less than the size of AMAC in the FCT. We have conducted 179 elections in 279 constituencies. In addition to the recent verification of petitioner signatures for the recall of a member of the National Assembly. Since January this year, we have conducted four elections, majority of them by court order. We still have five by-elections into the National and State Assembly constituencies to conduct, including four constituencies or vacancies that occurred in less than two months between March and April 2018. This is in addition, as I said earlier, to the two off-season governorship elections in Ekiti and Oshun. So between now and September before the general elections, we have, to the best of our knowledge, seven elections to conduct nationwide. You know, the latest one occurred, unfortunately, only last week in Oyo State. Mr. Chairman, we are determined to make the 2019 general elections the best election in Nigeria ever. We cannot do it alone as INEC. We need the full support of all stakeholders. It is our hope that we can continue to count on your support and the support of other media in general. Only by working together can we continue to deepen our democracy. Our commitment to the Nigerian people is that only the votes cast in any election will determine the outcome. Nothing more, nothing less. Once again, I thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm round of applause for the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. Uh, a rich, rich presentation that we just uh, received from the chairman of INEC. And uh, you could tell the first thing he did when he stepped to the platform was to open his phone. And then he gave us a rundown of the number of days, the accurate number of days, hours, down to the seconds that we have before the 2019 elections. That tells me, and anyone around here, that INEC appears to be in touch with all the, uh, all the things, all the parts to a successful general elections come 2019. And he said something. A badly conducted election can be the difference between war and peace. We have seen that across uh, several sub-regions of the African continent. And he has called Bonn and all the parties under the umbrella to, to action for us to embrace fairness, to report uh, things as they happen, 
and then the responsibility of owning the space of communication. We have seen that uh, the advent of the internet has given people the leeway to express the depth of their truest and purest goodwill and the meanest of their malice. And it is the responsibility of the media uh, to, uh, to balance things out.